So yeah, talking back into the topics around, are we looking in the right direction with um, citizen scientists and collecting data to be precise and accurate uh, measurement? Do you think we're doing the right thing or what do you think? I think it's, it is important that people understand that, you know, these low cost sensors aren't, aren't, aren't the be all and end all, mm -hmm. but they've, you know, they're indicative. They can tell you some information, you know, you know, where a low cost sensor may be 100, 200 pounds, mm. you know, the ones that are used by DEFRA are tens mm. of thousands of pounds, so exactly. obviously they're going to be better. But there's still a lot of use that you can get if you understand the limitations mm -hmm. of these low cost sensors. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think one of the advantages of the low cost sensors is even if you know, people are using them, they start to understand about air pollution if they're not yeah. using them, you know, so the conversation is there. Yeah. And I think it's very important that the, we, we get people to talk about air pollution. Yeah. Now, if I talk about air pollution, I might talk about it in micrograms per cubic meter as a concentration. <laughs> but the person in the street, the person on the bus, mm. the person in the pub, in the park, they were, you know, they might talk about traffic lights, mm -hmm. a smiley exactly. face versus a face with a gas mask on, and they're very, very clear. Yeah. And a lot of these, if you've got low cost sensors, you can distribute them across a network, so then they appear on a map. Yes. And people are very good with maps, you yes. know, and, and maps are also language independent. You know, people will look at a map and they'll know where the house is, they'll know where the park is, and they'll shop and school and things like that. So it gets the conversation um, going. Right. Uh, with people, I think that's that. That really is one of the the, the, the nub of the matter, um, and also there's a sort of uh, you know it might be hidden benefit to some people, but you know to people involved in in, in sort of uh, air pollution science, yeah. uh, um, we know that it's something like between 45 and 50 percent of all greenhouse gases are also air pollutants. Oh. So if we by removing air pollutants, reducing air pollutants, yeah. we also uh, help. The target towards moving towards a net zero uh, world, you know. So we're getting this this concept of um, people refer to it as a co-benefit. So you know, it's not just you know climate change. A lot of people think about it being uh, distant sea, sea level rise in the Pacific or uh, melting ice caps, which is very distant from people, so they can't really uh, grasp that concept. But air pollution and people with sort of breathing difficulties, yes. you know, everybody knows someone with asthma. <laughs> and the rise of asthma has, has increased, you know, in the last 40 years. When I was at school, you know, someone with asthma was, uh, you know, they were a lot rarer than they are now. Mm -hmm. Now, every classroom in the UK, there'll be two, three, four, five children wow. with asthma. So it's much more commonplace. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got to also bear in mind that it's not just about breathing difficulties. Mm -hmm. These tiny particles that we're measuring, the tiniest particles go all the way into the bloodstream. Mm -hmm and they've been measured in unborn children. Yeah. So they're so tiny, they go into the bloodstream um, of an expectant mother, they pass through the placental mm. uh, barrier and go into the, you know, the blood of an unborn child. And when you say that to people, they just realize that you know, it's, that's, that's a long way away from a breathing difficulty. Breathing difficulties, you know, breathing issues are, are bad, mm -hmm. but actually this pollution is, is putting toxic material into yeah. children before they're born. Wow. You know, so this is, you know, and it, it moves it out and it's been linked, um, particulate matter has been linked with dementia, uh, diabetes, wow. the list of different ailments wow. that are impacted um, by air pollution is, is a huge list. And as medical science continues to get better and look into these, um, you know, every six months there's a new disease mm. that's associated with air pollution. Yeah. So it's not just about breathing difficulties, yeah. Um, it's a, it's about a whole spectrum of different illnesses yeah. that, it, that it impacts. Yeah, it's it's quite interesting that you've pointed out this main issue. So, based on my research as well, I found out that it leads to autism around kids as well. Yeah. And one of the things having kids as well is I have started to study the behaviour of my kids mm -hmm. to see how this might have affected them if they are acting a bit abnormal. And it's quite shocking, you know, to to find this. Could be a possible factor. Yeah. Do you think? Yeah, there's there's, there's cognitive impacts yeah. from from air pollution. Yeah. Um, and you know, it said there's no safe level mm. of air pollution. It's all, it's, you know, it's all bad. The, um, but you know, there are there are targets that we have to be yeah. uh, trying. And we've got to bear in mind a lot of these pollutants, they blow on the wind, so wow. we can't. It's very difficult 
to yeah. get to you know zero. Yeah. I mean, it, I'm very difficult. It's impossible actually yeah. to get to zero because yeah. a lot there's, there's lots of natural emissions mm -hmm. and things like that. But yeah. we can actually uh, reduce them, and there are new guidelines to actually to try and. Uh, they've just been brought in a couple of months ago to actually try and continue to reduce these levels and really drive them forward. And and like I keep saying, a very important thing is that it's on the agenda. People mm. are talking about it. Exactly. And it's not just the scientists talking about it. Mm. It's people talking about it in places like, yeah. you know, city, town hall, yeah. those sorts of places, the politicians, yeah. policy makers. They all start to understand a lot more of the science and it's spoken about. And you know, and now it's not just something. It's, it's not just mentioned in passing. It's it's something that drives forward policies in uh, councils like like in Bradford and and in, and in Leeds, where I'm from. That's that's perfect. Thank you so much. And it's such an insightful and a testament to what I've been doing as well. And like, and I guess everyone should be doing as well from a citizen scientist point of view as well. And I can't try not to think that people should get involved as much as possible to support and find more you know not just solutions but get the word out a bit more so people are aware of this things that's probably affecting our future you know from a cognitive health you know like further to how we even you know interact with people like like we, we don't know the courses and yeah. we question and we ask many places not knowing that the root of it is literally in what we breathe in yeah. you know so thank you so much for taking right. this time to chat with me and yeah thank you